Sleeping Leela of Radha and Krishna. Everything that God does is called Leela. Let's understand first the difference between Leela and Karma. Our Karma is not divine, so it's not called Leela. We perform our Karma out of our own free will based on the decision of our intellect as to where it believes it will find happiness. We endeavor in various ways in this world and those efforts result in our performing karma. So karma can be performed by those who have not attained divine bliss. Once you have attained divine bliss, you can no longer perform any karma. Why not? Because there's nothing more to do. We become krita kritya. Our doing is done. Because the only reason we had for doing anything, the attainment of divine bliss, that has been satisfied. So what is left to do? Nothing left to do, so no more karma. God, as stated by Shri Krishna in the Gita, also has no reason to do anything. Name parthasti kartavyam trishuloke shukinchana nanavaptam avaptavyam varta eva chakarmani. Shri Krishna says, Arjun, there's nothing for me to attain in this world. Nothing worth attaining is beyond my reach. Whatever exists in all the three worlds, it's all mine. So I have no reason to do anything. Yet I still perform actions. However, Janma karma cha me divya me vam yo veti tat 
तत्वतः त्यक्वा देहम पुनर्जन्म नईति मामेति सोर्जुन he goes on to explain in the gita that his actions are not ordinary actions they are divine so we instead of calling them divine actions we just call them leelas so a leela means a divine action and those who understand god's divine actions who accept their divinity they don't have to take birth again when they leave their body they go to shri krishna this is what he says so a leela is a divine action either by god or by a saint because a saint also has nothing left to do yastvatmarati revasya datma triptascha manava atmanyeva cha santushtas tasya karyam na vidyate gita shri krishna is explaining the state of a saint that the saint is now self contented because the saint has attained divine bliss so that soul is no longer in search of happiness they have found happiness so there's nothing left for them to do but both god and the saints nonetheless perform actions what is the reason behind those actions if they have no reason to do anything since they are already in possession of divine bliss mukhyam tasya hi karunyam shandilya maharshi gives the most succinct explanation he just says his karuna his compassion upon the souls that's his reason for doing anything so you could say that a leela is a gracious action of god or a god realized saint and the only reason for god or a saint to do anything is to grace other souls with their divine bliss so you can call it a gracious action a blissful action or just call it a leela god is bliss as we've heard many many times raso vai sa he is not he does not contain bliss he is bliss आनंदो ब्रह्मेति व्यजानात तैतरियो उपनिषद इन बोथ दीज मंत्रज इज सेइंग गॉड इज रस गॉड इज आनंद ही इज ब्लिस आनंद मयो भ्यासात ब्रह्म सूत्र सेज दैट वेदास टेल अस अगेन एंड अगेन दिस फैक्ट दैट गॉड इज ब्लिस so whatever he does can only be blissful whatever he does if he's eating what is he doing he's distributing bliss he's pouring ras by having something to eat if he's taking a walk he's pouring divine bliss through that leela if he's sleeping he's again pouring divine bliss through that leela the physical act is the means of distributing the bliss but whatever he is because he is bliss like the sun can only shine what else can it do it gives light and warmth god can only give divine bliss divine grace and all of his physical actions are the means of accomplishing that So we understand that even sleeping for Radha and Krishna is a leela. So in this leela Radha and Krishna have been busy doing other leelas, playing, frolicking, spending time with the gopis, and the day has passed. It's evening time now, and Lalita Sakhi notices that Yugal Sarkar are looking sleepy like when you're with someone and you you're having a nice time together but you all of a sudden you look at their face and you see their eyes are doing this <laughs> they're still happy to be talking to you or to be with you they may not even realize themselves how tired they are but you see their eyes are starting to do that so you say oh 
You need some rest. So Lalita Sakhi says, I think it's time for Radha Krishna to take some rest. Lalita Sakhi is one of eight Mahasakhis or eight personal aids of Radharani. These eight personal aids often play a very integral role in helping a Leela to take one direction or another. They're, they're always there to help take the Leela along to the next step or in, or in whatever way that Radha and Krishna wanted to go or in whatever way that the Ras will go on multiplying and will not plateau or decrease. These eight personal aids of Radharani have been referred to with the word swanch. Anch means a part of, and there are two kinds of anch of Bhagwan. God has two kinds of anch. He has swanch and he has vibhinnanch. Swanch are a direct part of his personality or an expansion of his own self. And Vibhinnanch are us, the ordinary souls, who are actually a part of his Jeev Shakti. We're a part of his soul power. We are also his Anch. But it's not the same as being Swanch. A Swanch is part of his personal power, Swarup Shakti. Swarup Shakti is God's personal power that makes him all blissful, all knowing, omnipresent, all powerful. So anyone who is anch of that Swarup Shakti is God himself and has all of God's powers. But we are not in that category. We are Vibhinnanch. We are a part of his soul power, his Jeev Shakti. Thus, we have everything in limitations. We are not all powerful. We're not all knowing. We're not all blissful. We can become all of these things when he gives us his Swarup Shakti. But then we become Swarup Shakti Yukt. Upon God realization, even a soul like us, who's part of his soul power, when we surrender to him, he gives us that personal power. So we also become all blissful, all knowing, all powerful. However, we still don't become anch of that Swarup Shakti. We've just received it. He's given it to us. We are still anch of his soul power. So a soul is always a soul before God realization and after God realization. While under Maya we are souls, and once we're liberated from Maya, we are still souls. However, after being liberated, and since we surrendered to him, he gives us his Swarup Shakti. So we become Swarup Shakti Yukt. We do not become his Swanch, however. We will always remain his Vibhinnanch. But Lalita and these eight personal aids of Radharani they are since eternity swanch, which means they're actually the expansion of Radha's own self. These eight Mahasakhis are another form of Radha, you can say, anch of Radha, direct anch of Radharani. So they always know exactly what do Radha and Krishna want, what should be done next. How should we make this Leela go on? So Lalita has understood that now it's time for Radha and Krishna to rest. So she says, let's go. Chali mahal so do so vana bela ai. It's time to rest. It's time to sleep. So let's all go to the palace, to Radharani's palace.
Krishna are doing the Leela of sleeping or right now they're starting to feel sleepy so Lalita Sakhi has said come let's all go back to the palace and you Priya Priyatam you can go and take some rest you can go and sleep so you might be wondering doesn't Krishna have to go back to Mother Yashoda's house to sleep She's going to wonder where he is if he spends the whole night in Radharani's palace. Maya will surely be worried. In fact, how is it he's out in the evening with Radha and the gopis in the first place? Isn't he supposed to be out grazing the cows? Saints like Kripaluji Maharaj have revealed some secrets of Radha Krishna Leelas which are not necessarily even revealed openly in places like the Bhagavatam which tells all the main Leelas of Shri Krishna's dissension. But we know through, through these saints that Radha and Krishna did different kinds of Leelas when they were here. And in fact, even though Shri Krishna did go out and graze the cows and calves every day, but he also went and met with Radha and the gopis every day. It's not like, okay, some days he decided to go graze the cows, and then some days he thought, no, let me go to Barsana today, let me go to Gavarban and meet with Radharani. Grazing the cows is a seven day a week, 365 days a year job. 
the cows have to go out and eat the grass every day. You don't get a weekend. Like, okay, it's Saturday and Sunday, no grass for you guys. <laughs> so once Sri Krishna started grazing the cows, he had to go every day. Of course, he started with the calves when he was young, and when he and the, the boys got older, then they started grazing the full-grown cows. So in fact, he did go and he did all, you can say in one form, Shri Krishna did Braj Leelas every day. And in another form, he did Kunj Nikunj and Nibrit Nikunj Leelas every day. So these Braj Leelas are general Leelas, which include the Gwalbals, the grown-up Gwals, Mother Yashoda, Nanda Baba, and the Gopis. You know, let's say Shri Krishna is going down to uh, Yamuna River and he brings his Gwalbals with him. And there's some gopis there with their pots. And he and the Gwalbals are throwing pebbles and breaking some of the pots. So that's like a Braj Leela. It's not a Kunj or Nikunj Leela because in Kunj, Nikunj Leelas, only gopis can be there with Radha and Krishna. No Gwalbals, nobody else. So it's a general Braj Leela. Same thing if Shri Krishna is going out to graze the, the calves or the cows, he goes out as he's walking, he's passing all the gopis' houses, the cows are going in front, Shri Krishna and his friends and Balram are coming behind, the gopis are seeing, Krishna is walking by, so they're taking, they're enjoying the bliss of that vision and Gwalbals are also going and Maya has also sent the lunch with Krishna and she's anxiously awaiting his return. And when he comes back in the evening, there again, all the gopis are waiting and they go out to have Shri Krishna's darshan as he passes by. So these are all Braj Leelas, where everybody is there, everybody's involved. And these Leelas were happening all the time during Shri Krishna's time in Braj. Every day, all day, every day, the Braj Leelas were happening. However, simultaneously, Shri Krishna was revealing the bliss of these Vrindavan Leelas, the Kunj Nikunj Nibhrit Nikunj Leelas, because in another form he went to Barsana every day from Nandagal. He would go to Barsana every day. In one form, he's out grazing the cows on Govardhan, and in another form, a bigger form, you can say, like as his little boy, Balak Shri Krishna, he's maybe what, five years old, six years old, seven years old as he grows up and he goes and he's playing with his friends and grazing the calves. But when he goes to Radha and the gopis, he's always 16 years old. We call that Kishore Avastha, the best age, the, the full bloom of youth. You know, when you're growing older and older, meaning from being a young child and then you become a teenager, and so it's understood that around 16 years of age is like the zenith of our youthful beauty. After that, things start to go downhill. <laughs> Even just in terms of general health, you see, you watch the kids walk around, it looks like they have spring in their step, right? You think, what, are their knees spring-loaded or something? Like, what? look at how they move, just so quick and bouncy. After 16 even, you see it starts going down. You watch an 18-year-old, they don't walk like that. So Radha and Krishna are at that age, although in the divine world there's no need to keep track of age, but we say for our own understanding they're always in that 16-year-old form in the divine world. So in that form, Shri Krishna used to go and meet Radha and the gopis every day in Barsana, in Gavarban, and do all the Vrindavan-type leelas, the Kunj and Nikunj and Nibrit Nikunj leelas. So in that way, Shri Krishna revealed all the different kinds of bliss while he was there in Braj, and even at the same time would be sleeping in his house after coming back from grazing the calves and Maya gave him a bath and put fresh clothes on him and all his ornaments and decorated him and gave him his dinner, fed him lovingly 
and then let him maybe play a little bit outside and then put him to bed. At the same time, Shri Krishna is over there in Radha's palace in his full grown form. So these are a different kind of Leela, right? He can't do that Leela when he's there with Mother Yashoda. So in this other type of Leela, this Kunja Leela here, he spent the whole day playing in Barsana and Gavarban with gopis and Radha and now he and Radha are getting sleepy. So Lalita says, let's go back to the palace and Krishna is going to spend the night there in the palace. So they've prepared a bed, Manina Alankrita Kanaka Palanga Bhala. Very beautiful golden bed. The whole bed, the whole structure of the bed is made out of pure gold. And of course, it's very ornately cast. And embedded in the structure, the golden structure, are all different kinds and colors of jewels. And on top of that, where Radha and Krishna are going to lie, are flowers and flower petals, like a thick bed of flowers and flower petals that are very soft and also fragrant. And in addition to the fragrance of the flowers themselves, gopis have sprinkled a little bit of perfume, some natural fragrance, just to add to the, the sweetness and the, the overall effect of the bed. So it's very pleasing to Radha and Krishna also. They see the bed and it just looks very nice, smells very nice. So they're feeling sleepy and gopis have brought them back to the palace and they've already prepared this bed for them. So now Radha and Krishna are feeling like, okay, yes, it's time. We're going to take some rest. Then, uh, Yeah. 
से ज सजा युगल वर फूलन से ज सजा युगल वर फूलन से
might be wondering, does God also get tired and have to rest like we do? We feel that way because we're mayic beings. We have a body made of panchamahabhut. Our body is made of these material elements. It has its limitations. You can only push it so far. You have to give it food, water, rest, sleep. Our mind also gets tired. It needs to rest. When we sleep, our mind is no longer in a conscious state. It enters Swapna Avastha when we're dreaming. And it also goes into Sushupti Avastha when we enter deep dreamless sleep. And then we wake up again and our mind re-enters its conscious state. Is God like this? That God feels tired, gets too much stress, thinks, let me just go to bed and sleep it off. When everything in the world is bothering you, you think, let me just go sleep. When I wake up, maybe I'll feel better. Does God, when he goes to sleep, does he dream? Does he go into sushupti avastha? We don't know. It's a divine secret. His secret. But certainly God doesn't get tired the way we get tired. Esha atma parita papama vijaro vimrityur vishoko vijighatso pipasa satya kama satya sankalpa chandogyo panishad says that God doesn't have to worry about hunger, thirst, old age, death, disease. None of these things can touch him. So we can assume that God's body doesn't get tired and doesn't need rest. And why does he sleep? Because it's a Leela. Everything is possible in Leela Chetra. Leela Chetra means the field of Leelas, or you could say in the Leela zone, everything is possible. So even though God has a divine body, which was never born and will never die and is always perfect, his body is also Sat Chit Anand, so he can never get old, never get diseased, never get tired, never get hungry. Yet, we see Radha and Krishna also do dining leelas. They eat. Little Krishna quarrels with his mother when she's making the butter. She's making the butter, she's churning the curd to make the butter and he's quarreling with her, Mother, I want the butter now. Stop making the butter and feed me the butter. <laughs> I can't feed you the butter until I've made the butter, Lala, you have to wait. So God doesn't get hungry, but he's acting hungry. God doesn't get sleepy, but he's acting sleepy. Yet we know also we have to keep in mind, even though he's above all of this, it's not like he's pretending. All of this happens in this Leela zone or this Leela Chetra because of Yoga Maya Shakti. Or you can say because of the divine love power, God actually feels sleepy. God actually feels hungry. If he was just pretending to be hungry, what would be the Ras in that Leela? Oh, Krishna's just pretending to bother his mother for some butter, to amuse us. So, we might find it slightly interesting, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't capture our heart. When we actually think, oh, Krishna was really crying because he wanted his mother's attention or he wanted the butter, that captures our heart. Oh, Radha Krishna were really feeling sleepy? And when they saw the bed, they thought, oh, yes, let's lie down and take some rest. Yes, they were really feeling like that. So this is the effect of God's personal power. You can call it Swarup Shakti, Yoga Maya Shakti. You can call it by its essence, the divine love power. This makes all of this possible. Karmanya nihasya bhavo bhavasya te durga shrayatva 
दुर्गा इन द भागवतम ब्रह्मा इज सेइंग टू श्री कृष्ण यूर बियॉन्ड माय इंटेलेक्ट इन व्हाट वे यू हैव नो फियर यूर द लॉर्ड ऑफ द गॉड ऑफ डेथ yet you ran from jarasand jarasand is a demon he was powerful but who is he compared to god after he attacked you so many times and you repelled his attacks in the end you ran from mathura you and balram both you turned tail and ran and didn't stop running until you got all the way to the ocean in gujarat and you didn't even stop then you went off the coast onto an island and built your city there a fortified city where jarasand would not bother you why did you do this some say it was to get a new name ranachor and the devotees of dwarika adhish shri krishna loved to call him by that name ranachor my cowardly king who ran away from the battlefield he's so dear to my heart So Shri Krishna has many ways of giving pleasure to his devotees even though he has no fear sometimes he acts fearful gana ghamand nab garjat ghora priyahin darpat man mora bhagwan ram is sitting in a cave waiting out the rainy season waiting for the rains to pass so they can start looking for sita and he says to his brother lakshman because there are big thunder clouds making noise in the sky and hearing that thunder he says to lakshman i'm so frightened by the deep rumbling of these clouds i feel so fearful without sita by my side god is afraid of thunder and even radha rani when she sits on the swing and shri krishna's pushing and out of his naughty nature gives a little harder push every once in a while our sukumari our delicate kishori ji also feels frightened hey naughty krishna what are you doing when he's on the boat in prem sarovar and he's rocking it radha also feels afraid oh the boat shouldn't tip but this all happens in the area of leelas कालात्मनो यमदायुताश्रय स्वात्मनते खिद्यतिधीर्दा ब्रह्मा सज इवन द मोस्ट हाइस्ट इंटलेक्चुअल्स दे फेल टू अंडरस्टैंड इफ दे ट्राई टू एनालाइज युअर लीलाज दैट यू आर सेल्फ कंटेंट यू आर आत्मा राम Shri Krishna but you're still doing leelas with the gopis doing ras what is your need to even interact with another soul you should just be sitting happily enjoying your divine bliss why would you interact with anyone yet you seem to desire the love of your devotees in fact he does in the same way that we love him he loves us plus there's another thing at work shri maharaj ji explained one time that shri krishna gets to enjoy two kinds of anand swarup anand which is his own blissful nature he's always enjoying his own blissfulness but in these leelas with his saints with these god realized souls in these interactions where shri krishna is giving bliss to those souls and the souls are loving krishna back so in fact they're giving the love back to shri krishna they're multiplying it and giving it back to him and he multiplies it and gives it back to them this is called manas anand so this anand that shri krishna enjoys in the interaction in these leelas with his saints is actually a higher experience even for shri krishna so even though he's self contented yet he does desire the love of his devotees if he didn't again it would be acting right you think oh he's just pretending to play with his friends he's god he doesn't really care 
if his friends play with him or not. He's God. He doesn't need to do ras to feel happy. He can just sit and close his eyes and enjoy. No, he wants to do all of those leelas. He loves to do that and he loves to be with his bhaktas. Even in the divine world, because of everything happening in these leelas, many things happen like they do in this world, like Shri Krishna gets sleepy, Radha Krishna gets sleepy, they sleep, they go to bed, then in the morning gopis have to wake them up. They shouldn't keep sleeping too long. The sun's up, you've been sleeping a long time now, Priya Priyatam, please wake up. They're not waking up. Then gopis get an idea, okay, whisper Krishna's name in Radha's ear, and someone else whisper Radha's name in Krishna's ear, then they wake up. So, they sleep. They like to keep sleeping just like we do. And someone has to get them up in the morning. Even though God is beyond feeling tired to this point. Unnidrasya yayustavatra viratim saptakchapastishthato hanta shranta ivasinik Gwalbal is saying to Shri Krishna that Shri Dhamma Pano Giri. Oh Shri Krishna, why don't you take a break? Why? You've been holding Govardhan Hill for seven days and seven nights without sleeping, without even changing it hands. Like at least put it to your right hand and we can massage your left hand, can have a little rest. But no, you're holding it with your left finger, your pinky finger of your left hand for seven days, lagatar without taking even a minute's break. Or better yet, why don't you let Shri Dhamma hold it for some time? <laughs> but Shri Krishna never got tired. He kept holding Govardhan until Indra realized his mistake and gave up. So Shri Krishna doesn't feel tired. Radharani doesn't feel tired in the same way we feel tired. However, in this Leela, they're getting tired. They get up in the morning, they eat, they go for a walk. So there's something happening all the time in the divine world. There's some kind of leela happening. You won't be bored. Sometimes we have a fear. What will it be like over there in the divine world? When people ask that, even though we can never know what it's like over there in the divine world, normally our reason for asking that question is, Will I like it over there? <laughs> <laughs> like one time, someone asked a fakir that, uh, you know, over there in the divine world, uh, what's it like? I mean, is there more crowd there or in hell? Because this person was per the type of person who liked to have fun, have a good time. So, you know, Tell me, what he's, so this uh, uh, saint said, you know, over there in the divine world, there's a few people, they sit and they're just doing their prayers all the time. But, uh, you know, there's a lot more people in hell. There's a big crowd over there. So the person who asked the question said, I think I'd rather go to hell. There'll be a good crowd, probably uh, have a good time over there. Or when Prahlad was leaving this earth, he said to a pig, that uh, Chalain Golok, you want to accompany me? I'm leaving for Golok now. You, come on, I'll take you along with me. The pig said, will I get my Khadya Padarth over there? 
You know, what do pigs eat? They eat the muck and the mud, but also like if you see a, a pile of composting, decomposing garbage and everything and it's becoming mud and that's their favorite thing to eat, the smelly decomposing stuff. So this pig is saying, this is what I appreciate in this world. Will I get that over there in the divine world? We kind of, this is what we're asking, right? What's it like over in the divine world? Will there be pizza? <laughs> Will there be NFL football on Sundays? <laughs> we're worried that all these things we're so attracted to and we enjoy so much in this world, will we miss that when we're over there in the divine world? So, of course the answer is no. When you're enjoying unlimited divine bliss, of course you're happy all the time. But still our mind thinks, happy all the time? Won't that get boring? <laughs> so there's no way we can comprehend what, what any of that is like. But at least through these leelas we get some idea that okay, they sleep, they enjoy sleeping, they get up in the morning, they eat, they interact, they go for walks. So there's always something happening. And through these leelas, Radha and Krishna are always multiplying the bliss enjoyed by their devotees and by themselves as well. Shine on our 
Radha and Krishna lie down on the bed and as they lie down to take rest, Arti is sung by the gopis. They sing the evening Arti. And hearing the Arti, Radha and Krishna start to fall asleep. And how do they fall asleep? Do Uradhari, Do Kar, Do Sovat. Each one has their hand on the heart of the other one. So they lie like that, facing each other, or maybe on their backs with one hand over on the heart of the other, and Krishna is also reaching over and he has his hand on Radharani's heart. And gopis are singing Arti and looking at this jhanki, at this vision of Radha and Krishna, starting to fall asleep on this bed of flowers on the golden palang, and they're enjoying the most. Radha and Krishna have fallen asleep and the gopis have sung the arti. So they're sleeping now, they're fast asleep and gopis are all watching and enjoying. Then Sri Kripaluji Maharaj comes 
and without saying anything because he didn't want to wake up Radha and Krishna, he just motioned, indicated to the gopis that, come on, we should all go and sleep also. So let's go sleep. Then everyone went to sleep. We don't know, maybe someone stays to make sure in case Radha Krishna needs something in the middle of the night, maybe one gopi stays. But uh, anyway, Kripaluji Maharaj told them, come on, come on, you all go to bed now. Let Priya Priyatam sleep in peace. Nain Nind Rahi Chaya Srimat Yugal Sarkar Ki Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai.